Good morning from the Midwest. Welcome to Midwest Today. I'm Ethan, your go-to guy for all things new. And I'm Sarah, here to bring you the latest in culture and everything that makes our region special. How's it going today, Ethan? Oh, you know, just living the dream, Sarah. I went to that corn festival in Springfield last weekend, ate my weight in corn dogs. I saw that. Your Instagram was basically a shrine to deep fried goodness. Did you try the bacon wrapped corn dog at the Illinois State Fair? Of course. And I'm not ashamed to say it changed my life. I mean, it's the perfect combination of all things delicious. But enough about my questionable eating habits. What's on our plate today, Sarah? Well, besides the fact that we're still digesting all that corn, we've got an exciting lineup. We'll be diving into some political shifts with Governor Tim Walz joining Kamala Harris's ticket, chatting about Chappelle Roan's new album, exploring Ohio's recent cannabis legalization, discussing the new Superman filming in Cleveland, and sharing news about Bon Iver's upcoming performance. A perfect mix, as always. Let's get started before I get hungry again. And before Ethan goes off on another food tangent, let's dive into our headlines. This week in Midwest News, we're seeing significant political movements. Recently, Vice President Kamala Harris selected Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her running mate, adding some Midwest muscle to her ticket. This move is expected to influence the upcoming elections significantly. That's right. Walz has a strong track record in Minnesota, focusing on education and health care. His addition to the ticket could sway voters in key swing states across the Midwest. What do you think, Ethan? Absolutely. His experience and approach to local governance resonate well with Midwestern values. And speaking of politics, there's also been a surge in voter registration in states like Ohio and Wisconsin. It seems people are more engaged than ever before. It's fascinating to see how the Midwest continues to be a battleground for national politics. And let's not forget about the economic front. Did you hear about the new Tech Hub initiative in Indianapolis? I did. Indianapolis is transforming into a tech hotspot, attracting startups and big tech companies alike. This initiative is expected to create thousands of jobs and drive innovation in the region. It's amazing to see the Midwest embracing tech while maintaining its traditional industries. Speaking of tradition, the Chicago Cubs had an incredible game last week. They won in the final inning with a spectacular home run. I saw that. The crowd went wild. It's moments like these that remind us why we love sports so much. And it's not just about the game. It's about the community coming together. That's what makes the Midwest special. Now, let's shift gears to a more artistic note. Chappelle Roan, originally from Missouri, is making waves with her new album, Rise and Fall of a Midwestern Princess. Her music blends pop with deeply personal storytelling, reflecting her Midwestern roots. Have you listened to it yet? Absolutely, and I love how her songs encapsulate the essence of growing up in the Midwest. It's a beautiful mix of vulnerability and strength. Did you know she started her career performing at small local venues in Missouri? Yes, and her journey from those small venues to national fame is truly inspiring. Her song, Naked in Manhattan, has been stuck in my head for days. It's got that perfect blend of vulnerability and strength. Plus, her music videos are visually stunning, often featuring themes of nature and small town life. It's interesting to see how she stays true to her roots while appealing to a broader audience. Her authenticity is what sets her apart. And speaking of authenticity, she's also very active in supporting LGBTQ plus causes, which is reflected in her music and public persona. And her live performances are something else. She has a unique way of connecting with her audience, making each show a personal experience. It's great to see someone from our region making such a big impact on the national stage. Absolutely. She's definitely someone to keep an eye on. And speaking of impact, her involvement in various social causes has inspired many young artists to use their platforms for good. It's a trend we're seeing more and more in the music industry.
Today, we're exploring the rich culinary heritage of the Midwest. From bratwurst and sauerkraut, brought by German immigrants to pierogies from Polish traditions, our food scene is a melting pot of flavors. And let's not forget the iconic state fairs, where you can find everything from deep-fried Oreos to butter sculptures. These events are a testament to our region's unique blend of tradition and creativity. Did you know the Iowa State Fair has been running since 1854 and is one of the largest in the country? It's happening this year from August 8th to 18th. I did. And each year, they unveil a new butter sculpture. Last year's was a tribute to the state's dairy farmers, complete with life-sized butter cows. It's incredible to see such artistry in something as simple as butter. Absolutely. And speaking of fairs, the Minnesota State Fair, running from August 22nd to September 2nd, is famous for its food on a stick. You can find everything from deep-fried candy bars to teriyaki ostrich on a stick. It's a foodie's paradise. And it's not just about the food. These fairs are a celebration of community, agriculture, and local talent. They bring people together and showcase the best of what the Midwest has to offer. And it's not just the big state fairs. Smaller county fairs and food festivals are equally vibrant. They offer a more intimate setting where you can really get to know the local producers and artisans. Have you ever been to the National Cherry Festival in Traverse City, Michigan? I have. The cherry pie eating contest is a highlight and the cherry products you can find there are amazing, from cherry jam to cherry wine. It's events like these that make the Midwest so special. Absolutely. And the sense of community you feel at these events is unparalleled. It's a reminder of how close-knit and supportive Midwestern communities are. Now let's talk about a significant development in Ohio. The state recently became the 24th in the U.S. to legalize cannabis for adult recreational use. This was decided through a referendum known as Issue 2, which was comfortably approved by Ohio voters. This new legislation permits adults aged 21 and over to buy and possess up to 2.5 ounces of cannabis and even allows for home cultivation. It's a substantial shift in the state's approach to marijuana use and regulation. Absolutely. The initiative also includes a 10% tax on marijuana purchases, with the revenue earmarked for administrative costs and addiction services. This proactive stance could serve as a model for other states considering legalization. More than 2 million Ohioans voted in favor of Issue 2, reflecting a significant change in societal attitudes towards marijuana. It's going to be interesting to see how this impacts the state both economically and socially. Indeed. The economic benefits could be substantial, from increased tax revenue to the creation of new jobs in the cannabis industry. There's also potential for investment in community programs funded by cannabis tax revenue. And let's not forget the impact on criminal justice. With the legalization, there's likely to be a reduction in marijuana-related arrests and incarcerations, which disproportionately affect minority communities. It's a multifaceted issue and it will be fascinating to watch how it unfolds. Ohio is setting an example that many other states will be observing closely. And finally, some exciting news for movie buffs. The new Superman film is set to be shot in Cleveland, Ohio, bringing a touch of Hollywood to the Midwest. Cleveland is transforming into the fictional metropolis for this latest installment, directed by James Gunn. That's fantastic. The Greater Cleveland Film Commission estimates that the influx of film production activities in Northeast Ohio will bring approximately $147 million to the local economy in 2024. This includes direct spending on goods and services and boosts to local businesses such as restaurants, hotels, and transportation services. Local residents are thrilled about the city's transformation one resident shared that the costumes seem vintage with neutral colors, and the set design has transformed Cleveland into metropolis with police and taxi cabs labeled as such. It's exciting to walk through downtown and feel like you're in another city. Absolutely. The production has been centered around Public Square and the surrounding downtown areas, utilizing Cleveland's unique architecture to add authenticity to the film. 
This setting not only enhances the movie, but also showcases the city's charm. Residents have embraced the filming, with many expressing excitement about the economic benefits and the unique experience of living in a movie set. It's expected to bring a significant economic boost, with an influx of spending in local businesses and services. The broader impact of film productions in Ohio is notable. Since 2009, the media sector has resulted in an economic impact of 138 billion acres, the creation of over 7,000 full-time equivalent jobs in the state. This Superman production is a testament to the potential of film to serve as a significant economic driver for local communities. As excitement builds for the film's release, Clevelanders are proud to see their city shine on the big screen. It's great to see how the community has rallied around this project, making it a win-win for everyone involved. In more exciting news, Bon Iver, the Grammy-winning indie folk band fronted by Justin Vernon, is set to perform at a rally for Vice President Kamala Harris in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. This event, scheduled for August 7th, is part of Harris's tour through several swing states as she campaigns for the 2024 presidential election. Eau Claire holds special significance for Bon Iver and Vernon, as it's their hometown. This performance continues their tradition of engaging in political events, like their support for Bernie Sanders in 2020 and voter engagement efforts in 2022. It's great to see artists using their platform to influence political discourse and encourage civic participation. Bon Iver's involvement is expected to draw a diverse audience, highlighting the intersection of music and politics in contemporary campaigns. And their music has always had a way of bringing people together. It's fitting that they would be involved in an event aimed at galvanizing community support and engagement. Absolutely. It's another example of how artists can play a crucial role in shaping public opinion and motivating people to take action. I'm looking forward to seeing how this event unfolds and the impact it will have. That wraps up our first episode of Midwest Today. We hope you enjoyed our mix of news, culture, and Ethan's undying love for corn dogs. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Join us next week for more stories from the heartland. Stay tuned and stay Midwestern 